So we've all seen them and we've probably all used them. These two kind of extreme examples of practice activities and worksheets that we give kids where we have a ton of problems that we're having them practice, or we just have a couple. I'm Christina Tondeval, The Recovering Traditionalist, and I hope that you will stick around as we investigate when it comes to assessing math proficiency. How many math problems should kids get in our quest to build our math minds so we can build the math minds of our students? Now, personally, when I was in school, I loved problems like this, where I could just zip through plotting, oops, this way, zip through plotting every single one of those points on the coordinate grid, and I could just do, it was just very procedural for me, right? I could do this, and I knew that if I just stuck with it, I would be perfectly okay. On the other hand, when I was given problems like this, where it was a word problem and we had to go deep into this problem, I hated it. <laughs> I think that's why I have to do the things I do now is because I've been learning uh, a lot about the power of these kinds of problems. But here's the thing. You have students who are like me. You have students who are the complete opposite of me and who would rather spend a lot of time digging deep into one problem, right? We all have different learning styles, but when it comes to assessing our students, which one of these do we choose? Well, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a series here around how to assess mathematical proficiency. But in today's, I really wanna focus on the number of problems because here's one of the things that I see as an issue. If I don't think that one problem is the correct answer, but I also don't think 100 is the correct answer, right? If we only give one problem to assess a specific math concept, a student might guess it or they might make an error and get it wrong, but it seems like they weren't proficient even though they had some great thinking and all they did was make one little calculation error versus a kid who guessed it, got it right, right? And they are seen as proficient, but really they aren't, right? If we have a small number of problems that we're giving kids, it doesn't give us a full picture of that student's mathematical thinking. However, if we have a 100 problems, what ends up happening in that kind of a situation is that kids start to lose focus, they become more error prone, right? All of that basically um, productivity goes down when we have a ton of problems that kids are having to get through. So think of it this way, like, um, let me just caveat this with a little bit because another video, I'm gonna go deeper into this, but the way that we used to grade kids was basically you give them a sheet and how many they get correct versus how many there were on the paper and it was a percentage grade and it gets averaged out, right? We are starting to do away with that and in a future video, I'm gonna talk about that thing and how we're moving away and what we're moving towards. But for the sake of this video, I just wanna keep this in mind, okay? Let's say we give kids uh, a practice set that we are grading to tell whether or not a kid is proficient. And it's got 10 problems on it. They only have to get nine or eight or whatever your cut cutoff is. I'm just gonna say nine, okay? Uh, let's just say nine out of 10 makes you feel like the kid is proficient. Or maybe it was eight out of 10. I don't know, you pick. But if we increase the set that we are pulling from, and now we have 100 problems, that same child has to get 80 or 90 correct to get that same percentage. But when we have a large set, that becomes harder and harder to do. So I, I just wanna put this out here and pose the question. I don't know that I have the right answer here, but I wanted to pose these issues so that we can start learning from each other. So down in the comments, what I'd really love for you to do is share with me, what do you do, what does your school do, whatever the situation is, when it comes to assessments. And I, in future videos, we're gonna talk about more in depth about the assessments, but I'm just curious about the number of problems 
that makes you feel like, okay, we gave them three problems and they got two out of the three, or do they have to get three out of the three? Like what, how, when you're assessing kids, what is your basis for pulling items and deciding these are the set that we are going to give our students and this is how many they need to get correct for us to feel like they are proficient, okay? Because like I said, I don't have the right answer and I think it's interesting for us to learn from each other, to think about what other people are doing to help build our math minds so that we can build the math minds of our students. It's not just about what I think or what's happening at your school. I really feel it's important that we learn from others to widen our minds about what is mathematical proficiency, how do we assess it, and in this instance, how many problems does it take for us to feel like they're proficient? Okay, so again, drop that in the comments and I hope that you have a great day.